calling, I'm speaking to you, sorry, from Italy's sick form uh, in Schiffnall. So you may have heard of us, you might not have. We're quite a small sick form. We've got about 100 students in each of our year groups, which has its advantages because, of course, it means we get to know you really, really quickly. Uh, it means we have relatively small classes, I suppose, as well. And it also means that, uh, fingers crossed, by the end of your two years, we put you on a path that's really going to set you up for hopefully going off to something really successful and fantastic in another career or at university or whatever it might be. Um, I've been asked ostensibly to talk about science and mathematics, which unfortunately at the minute is I'm not going to be able to give you a huge amount of details about each of the courses. But what I will be able to do is I'll be able to talk to you about some of the support that we give at its or sit form and how we try and help and help you in order to as i say get to those next steps i will say i am an english literature teacher so again the very specific things that i can tell you about each of the courses is unfortunately uh, at a minimum but i'm really hoping nonetheless that i'll be able to give you um places basically to go to get some information and also a little bit of a taster about as i say the the general um i suppose the general support that we give you at its or sit form as well just to point out, I hope you can see this, uh, on November 16th, which is next week, we are putting live our virtual open evening for the sick form. Um, we're quite excited about this, actually, because in lieu of the fact that we can't see you face to face, what we've managed to do is not just put together a little video, but every single one of the, uh, the course leaders for each of the subjects has done their own individual little PowerPoint as well, or a little video like this one that gives you a guide to each of the courses. We often hear from a lot of people that one of the things that really sells our sixth form is the, the enthusiasm that our teachers have for each of their subjects. And so fingers crossed, you'll be able to sort of hear from them a little bit and to be able to hear some of the details about that as well. Before I get onto the specific stuff to do with science and maths, I do need to sell the sixth form a little bit. So just to say, over the last couple of years, we have had some fantastic results. I've put up the summer 2019 results simply because we've got a picture of our wonderful students and their fantastic results there. Unfortunately, in 2020, because of the whole COVID thing, we, weren't, we didn't manage to put any photographs together. They were rather socially distanced instead. But actually, the results that we've got and the results that you can see there are very similar to what we've had in, in uh, 2020. The good news as far as this goes, as far as I'm concerned, is if you can see that on screen, um, what's brilliant is that each year in the last three years, we've made huge improvements, particularly, as you can see, at the A star A grades. And for those of you, you science scientists and you mathematicians who are sitting there thinking that you want to take your, your subject um, knowledge off of to university, really, I'm hoping we can show you that we're setting you up for some fantastic results that will then give you lots and lots of different options when you go to university. And on that note, the majority of our students do go off to university. What's really great is we've got a higher number of students now that are applying for and going to Russell Group universities as well. If you're not sure what those are, they're essentially the top universities in the country. Um, and it means that really we've got students not just going to university to do courses, but they're doing really fantastic courses, which, as I said right at the beginning, and I'll keep on probably saying as well, sets you up for a fantastic career afterwards as well. As far as the subjects go, as you can see, I've underlined the ones that are specific to science and maths. Um, we've got obviously biology, chemistry, physics, our top three, and then mathematics and further mathematics. I will say with further maths, um, that it often has very small numbers of students that are taking it. This year, we actually only had two students that wanted to do it. And the one student who uh, decided that he was going to come to us is actually doing that now almost like a session six activity rather than having a specific class himself. Although we do have year 13s that are doing further maths at the moment. So it does tend to be those, those um, students who really are wanting to carry this on at university. And certainly the one that's doing it himself at the moment, he's definitely looking at some of the top universities to go to next year as well. We also have, obviously, with other courses that we've got there, one of the things that I would absolutely suggest and I will send this PowerPoint over and hopefully you'll be able to get some of these guides as well. We have all of these guides as a PDF that's on um, our website, so please go to the website for it. But the one thing I always suggest, and it's probably the best advice that I can give you at this point, regardless of whether or not you want to study maths and sciences at university at all, for anything that you're looking into right now, you must make sure that you do your research, as I've put here. Um, we find every single year when our students are doing their, you know, choosing their, their university course, courses, looking into courses. Normally, they start to look at that in year 12, but some of them leave it a little bit, little bit late and start looking at the beginning of year 13. 
The problem is, if you haven't chosen the right A-levels in the first place, then sometimes the door gets closed to quite a few courses at university as well. So as I put at the top here, some university courses are really obvious in what they ask for. Uh, you know, for maths, they're going to want maths, they're going to probably want further mathematics. If you want to go and do chemistry, it's likely that you're going to need to do that particular subject, obviously. Where you start to get a little bit more of the, the kind of the, the grey area is the stuff that's not quite so obvious. And I put a couple of examples down here from experiences that we've had in the last couple of years with, with our students. So for example, last year, we had one student who was trying to apply for an accountancy course and actually couldn't get onto the course because he didn't have a grade five at, uh, at GCSE for English language. He found out a little bit too late. And what ended up happening was in year 13, he belatedly tried to get into, a, tried to put forward, sorry, for a, a resit because he only had a grade four in English language at the time. And unfortunately left it too late really for his application to university and was having to kind of wait for um, his results to come through in January before he could actually contact the university to say that he had that and already had a couple of rejections. Uh, for dentistry, again, this is last year when one of our students was looking into it in year 12, he discovered late on in year 12 that he, he needed a grade seven for GCSE in English literature as well, which seems like a bizarre thing to say. And again, as an English literature teacher, I was quite happy to see that they wanted something like that. But it's not necessarily always the most obvious things that you realise you need when you're looking at university courses. A lot of the science courses, particularly as I put here at Russell Group University, um, we're finding that some students couldn't get onto courses because they weren't doing an A-level in mathematics as well. So what I'm trying to summarise here is to say this is not just about the courses that you're choosing for year 12. That's not just about doing your research and finding out what you need to do to get onto the course at A level, what you should really be doing, if you're thinking that you want to go into something like that at university at that higher level, you must make sure that you do your research beyond that as well. Because otherwise what you're gonna find is, as a couple of our students have unfortunately found, that it's a little bit too late to do anything about it. It doesn't mean that it's completely lost and that you won't go to university and you won't get onto courses. Both of those boys managed to get onto fantastic courses. But what it does mean is it might not be the one that you really want to get into and you're kind of cutting down on your options as well. So again, particularly for science courses, start looking now at university courses and the different types of courses that you can do as well, because that's going to give you a bit more information. My other bit of advice is if you're looking for, um, yes, I want to go to university, but I'm not entirely sure what course I want to be doing. Then the thing to kind of look into is things like this, what we call facilitating subjects. Um, and they're basically the handful of A-level subjects, again, as I put on the slide, that a lot of universities entry requirements actually ask for, regardless of what course you're applying to. So if you want to keep your options open, and you can see the sciences and the maths are on there, but if you're still not sure, if you think, yes, I'm sciencey, but I'm not completely sure if I want to do that at university, my suggestion would be to look into some of those other facilitating courses as well, just to make sure that you've kept as many options open as possible. Because if you do end up doing biology, chemistry and physics, and then halfway through year 12, you decide that you don't want to do anything in that particular area at all, then it's quite a good idea to maybe have something else in mind or something else to kind of um, help you when it comes to applying to universities. However, there are some really obvious course combinations that you can be using as well that perhaps will kind of set you up for these different uh, careers and these different courses. So as I put at the top here, the most obvious kind of things are physics, chemistry and mathematics go brilliantly together, particularly if you want to be going into anything to do with engineering. Chemistry, biology and actually geography, if you're looking for anything to do with the natural sciences, work really, really nicely together. Some of the other ones I won't talk about because you're here to listen to about, uh, about science and maths. But again, if you look down here, mathematics, computer science and physics, particularly good. P in biology goes really, really well as well. And as you can see here, we've got some a slightly random combination that I shall talk about in a little while, but apparently go really, really well together. But beyond the obvious com combinations, this is the other thing I want to draw your attention to. So again, I'm talking as an English teacher, so it's likely that I'm going to be saying good things about English. But just because you want to go into a science area or a mathematical area doesn't necessarily mean that you should dismiss some of those other subjects completely. So, for example, um, the sciences with English, believe it or not, can actually be a really, really good thing. Communication 
Communication skills, as I've put here, are extremely important in science. And in fact, I'm drawn to some of the press conferences, press conferences we've seen from Professor Chris Whitty in the last couple of months that we've had to go through and the way that they've had to explain quite complex ideas to a wide audience. Clearly, if you want to become an academic scientist, you want to go into lecturing, you want to do your own articles, you want to really go into research and actually specific skills in English or essay writing skills, things like history are actually really, really useful. I have a colleague actually who is an English literature teacher and her son is currently um, studying for medicine at the university, but he's also writing for a biology newsletter at the same time. So he's actually found a lot of the skills that he's used for English language have been very, very helpful for him. Um, and as I put at the bottom here, randomly, a really lucrative job, believe it or not, in science is being an expert witness in trials. So literally, as I put as an example, where individuals sue companies because they've suffered health problems, stuff like that, which seems very, very niche, but actually communication, again, is, is absolutely essential. So if you're thinking to yourself, I really like science and I really like English, but I don't think English is going to help me, actually, it absolutely could. And in fact, here, there's a particular job that we found at the University of Cambridge that specifically asked for English skills as well in order to, to get that particular role. So again, I think what I'm trying to obviously emphasise too, and I hope is coming across, is the thing that you've got to to do right now is research your courses for A-level, of course, look into those different courses, certainly please look at our course guide online because each of them will have some, some information about what you need. Okay. Was that two minutes? What did you say? Five minutes, sir? One minute left, Lorna, sorry. Okay, no problem. But if you go onto our website, again, it's going to have loads of information on there that, um, that can help you for each of the individual courses. And also, most of Importantly, if you are thinking what you want to do next, look on the UCAS website, type in a course and see what they're asking you to do. At ITSL, we use something called Unifrog, which is essential for us. And the one thing I can say is I'll just kind of finish off. You can look at all our entry requirements. I'll kind of finish it with, with putting our date as well of when you can actually look at our virtual course. One of the things that we offer as support, particularly for maths and science students, is each of our tutors is actually connected to that particular area. So we at least have, if you're doing lots of science um, courses, then what we then do is we make sure you've got a tutor that's actually a science teacher as well. What that means is, of course, is that you can do a lot of, you can get a lot of help from them. But secondly, also, it means that they'll be helping you a little bit when it comes to actually university courses and for jobs as well and what you're looking at. 